What's up ladies and gentlemen, Sativ here. In this video we're going to be covering the basics of Subtlety Rogue. Things like glyphs, talents, itemization choices like gems and enchants and reforges, and basic rotational stuff so that you can watch this video and feel comfortable jumping into PvP on your Rogue. So let's go ahead and get started by talking a little bit about talents. Rogue talents are pretty straightforward and honestly not a whole lot of switching gets done. Right now you can see I have Shadow Step, but 90% of the time I'm taking Burst of Speed. This burst of Speed is simply too valuable for getting restealths and avoiding damage. The fact that it makes you unsnarable lets you escape from terrible situations. You, know, you can kite a warrior relatively well with Burst of Speed, and you know if a mage it doesn't have you rooted, you can totally fuck off around a pillar and avoid most of his damage. Now that being said, sometimes I do like to take Shadow Step against casters that will root me in place. Because when I'm being rooted permanently, like, Burst of Speed isn't doing me much good. But then again, when I'm not using Burst of Speed, I'm so much easier to kill. So honestly, Burst of Speed, as OP as it is right now, is your best friend. You should definitely opt to use it as much as possible. One of the talents that I occasionally switch is a Nerf Strike for combat readiness. Though most of the time I'm running Nerf Strike, combat readiness is only for situations where I know I'm just going to get mongoloided into the dirt and no one's going to untarget me. Or battlegrounds. Because combat readiness makes for some pretty manly battleground montages. People don't really notice it's up and you're pretty damn tanky. I'm out of Tomes of the Clear Mind. Rip. Anyway, it's a good thing I'm out of Tomes of the Clear Mind because Subterfuge, Elusiveness, Prey on the Weak, and Mark for Death never get swapped. I'm using these four talents 99% of the time, whereas Combat Readiness and Nerf Strike, Burst of Speed and Shadow Step get swapped occasionally. As for glyphs, there are three major glyphs that I choose to use almost all the time. The first one being Blind, which will remove all damage over time effects when you blind a target. The next being Garrote, which increases the silence of your Garrote by a whole second. And lastly is Glyph of Hemorrhaging Veins. Your Sanguinary Vein ability now increases damage done to targets affected by your hemorrhage. Some other choices that you may want to look into taking for Glyphs are Glyph of Cheap Shot, Glyph of Cloak of Shadows, which reduces the physical damage you take while Cloak is active, Glyph of Faint, increases the duration of elusiveness by 2 seconds, and Glyph of Redirect is honestly pretty cool but I mostly use that for other specs, like Assassination or Combat. That's all for Glyphs though guys. As I said earlier, Glyph of Blind, Glyph of Hemorrhaging Veins, Glyph of Garrote. Some people you'll see running this here, Glyph of Cheap Shot, Blind, and Garrote, but that's simply because they're just not a fan of Hemorrhaging Veins. It's all personal preference at that point. Next up are Gems and Chants and Reforges. For starters, I'm going to talk about Reforges though, I think. Because in order to understand the rest of the shit, you need to understand how I'm reforging. So, I'm prioritizing mastery over crit over haste. And by mastery over crit over haste, I mean mastery better than crit, and haste is absolute shit. You don't want any haste at all. <laughs> Unfortunately, some of our pieces have haste on them automatically, like our shoulders and our pants. But lucky for us, we can reforge. So... I'm going to go over each and every single one of my pieces and explain to you what I'm doing with each one. So Helmet, I reforge the Expertise into Critical because the item already has Mastery. Neck, I reforge the Haste into Critical because the item already has Mastery. Shoulders, I reforge the Haste into Mastery because the item doesn't have Mastery, it has Expertise. On the Cloak, I reforge Crit, sorry, I reforge Hit into Crit because the item already has Mastery. My chest piece is a perfect example of good stats. Critical Strike, and Mastery. My Bracers, I reforge the Haste into Crit because the item already has Mastery. My Gloves, I reforge the Hit into Mastery because the item already has Crit. My Belt, again, nice stats, boy. I like it. My Pants, I get rid of that Haste, turn it into Mastery. On the Boots, we got the Crit and the Mastery. That's what you want. On the ring, I reforge the haste into mastery and leave the crit alone. And here, I reforge the hit into crit and leave the mastery be. 
Our weapons have critical strikes and mastery, so we just leave those two be as well. You can reforge your PvP trinket from crit into mastery, because we're valuing mastery over crit. So, any opportunity we get to get more mastery, you should go ahead and do it, girl. Let's talk about some enchants now. So for my shoulders enchant, I'm using the Tiger Claw Inscription, which is 200 agility and 100 critical strike rating. On my cloak, I have 180 critical strike rating. On my chest piece, I have Glorious Stats, which is 80 to all stats. My bracers, I have the IG enchant for 180 agility. My gloves, I got the Mastery enchant. Belt uses Living Steel Belt Buckle to get an extra socket. Pants use Shadow Scale Leg Armor to get an extra 280 agility and 165 crit. And your boots use Blurred Speed, which is 140 agility with movement speed. So, we've covered reforging and enchants. Now let's look at what I'm doing for gems. Gems are pretty straightforward. I'm gemming pretty much straight agility. And by pretty much, I mean the only places that I opt to swap out the Agi for the socket bonuses are in the yellow sockets where I can get myself a good chunk of stats. Like here I lose 20 agility and gain 160 mastery. Pretty good trade-off. Here I lose 80 agility, but I gain 120 PvP power and 160 mastery, which is pretty good. For the meta gem, I'm using the Ag Primal Agile Primal Diamond. And for the yellows, they're called Adepts Vermilion Onyx. And of course, everyone knows what a delicate. It's been delicate forever. <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about rotational stuff. Now, I'm not going to get too in-depth on rotational stuff in this video. What I'm actually going to do is cover the basics of it. And then I'm going to head you on over to one of my videos and get you to watch that. Because that video covers in-depth the topics that you're going to be looking for to deal max damage as a subtlety rogue. But for this video, let's go ahead and talk about the barebone basics of being a damage rogue. You want to apply yourself some wound poison and get yourself a mind numbing poison. Generally, PvP rogues use wound poison to apply the mortal strike debuff. It's extremely important. You want to pre-meditation and get slice and dice up from stealth and then be at full energy before you open as that is the most efficient way to open. Having a full energy bar and slice and dice preemptively rolling. Now when you're fighting your target you're going to want to keep slice and dice active almost all the time and when you're dealing damage to a target you want them to be affected by sanguinary vein which will increase your damage output by 35%. That's nothing to frown at. And through glyph of hemorrhaging veins, it makes it exceptionally easy to get that bleed rolling. Get your pressure going ham. So this is the part of the video where I'm gonna talk to you about a couple other videos that I've got on my channel that are exceptionally good for rogues who are just getting into PvP or players who are comfortable in PvP but just getting into rogue. So the first one that I'd like to talk about is energy pooling. The energy pooling video is extremely important for any serious rogue as your energy bar is basically what limits your actions. You know, if you open up on a target when you're at, let's say 60 energy after a sap or something and you shadow dance right there at 60 energy, you're really not going to accomplish a whole lot with that shadow dance. But if you're at full energy, you're really going to fuck shit up. Another one is how to maximize your burst potential as subtlety. That's a pretty good video too. It talks about how to line up your proc trinket and pay attention to it, as well as the steps you should take to deal the most damage to a target. Also, there's a video that covers specifically how to open in different situations. One for Glyph of Hemorrhaging Veins, and one for playing without Glyph of Hemorrhaging Veins. So, I'm going to have all these videos down below in the comment section. So all you need to do is scroll on down and take a look. Until next time, my friends, 
My name is Sativ, and I want you to stay sneaky, my friends.